Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to get that Novo Amor ambient folk type of vocal sound inside your DAW. You also hear this type of sound in a lot of those early Bonnie Vare records. So if you're going for that atmospheric ambient indie folk kind of vocal sound, then this video is for you. Now before we dive in, I just want to give a quick thanks to Jordan for recommending that I do this exact video. So I pay attention to the comments, so if you recommend or suggest something, I just might do it. So don't be afraid to leave a comment for the type of content that you would be interested in me doing. So let's dive in, this is how you get that Novo Amor vocal sound. So, because I wanted to give you guys a good example of what this type of sound sounds like and how to create it, I went ahead and did a remake slash cover of Novo Amor's most popular song, Anchor. And so here is what that sounds like. Took the breath from my open mouth Never known how it broke me down I went in circles somewhere else All right, we'll get to the rest of the song here in a minute, but uh, let's dive right in and see how we can get this type of sound on our vocals. So this all starts with the recording. What I did here and what I was hearing on the original is two lead vocal takes. This happens a lot. You get this a lot uh, for like ambient folk. Like I mentioned at the intro of this video, Bon Iver did this all the time uh, back in his early days. But what you need to do is, in essence, record two takes that are as close together as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I did use Melodyne to time these ever so slightly in a few spots. But so that's the first thing. You need to record two vocal takes and make sure they both sound really good. Um, Took the breath from my open mouth. And uh, what I did here, for this type of sound, notice how it's very soft. It's very almost Billie Eilish style. It's just, took the breath from my open mouth. And that's how I sang it into the mic. I'm not doing this. Took the breath from my open mouth. I'm not doing that at all. So when you're singing this type of style, you want to be very detailed and focused and warm and, and lush, right? You want to accentuate the overall vibe of the track on the vocals because the vocals are really what drive this type of sound. And so uh, that's the most important thing really, just like anytime you do vocals, the most important part of it usually is getting a good vocal take. So you want to make sure that you are, you have the right projection, that you're not shouting it, that you're not being too loud, but you're being very soft, very delicate about it, right? All right, now let's dive into the mixing process for these vocals. Now, what we have going on here is the left vocal and the right vocal. Those two tracks are right here. I'm sending both of these to the vocal bus over here. Now, we're going to get to this in a second, but I did do some processing on the individual tracks first. So the first thing we're looking at here is a gate. Let me turn off all these inserts. Um, yeah, let's just turn everything off and we'll go one by one. So we'll solo this and we'll start with the gate. Now using a gate is pretty simple and straightforward. The reason it's here is just to the phrases or the time in between the phrases, it just shoots the volume down. So it's almost like an automated volume fader where if there's nothing, then it shoots it down. That way you don't get all that noise or, or like me moving around between takes or smacking my lips or whatever, right? So as you can see, oh, uh, it compresses it. And, so, so. and then see this yellow right here is compressing it all the way down. Sure. That way it just gets rid of that space. So that is what the gate is doing there. The next thing we want to look at is tuning. Yes, I used a bit of auto tune on this. Now it's very light. It's very delicate. Again, we're not doing much. And if, if I was releasing this song and if this was my song that I was putting out, I may have put a bit more attention and focus on getting a really well tuned vocal take right from the jump. But if you use auto-tune correctly and intentionally, even in this type of folk style, 
you can tighten it up ever so slightly and it can just sound, it can add in that little bit of clean pop presence to your mix, which this song has those slight elements of pop, right? And so Talks I didn't want it to be too pitchy. My open mouth, never known how it broke me down. Here's without it. From my open mouth, never known how it broke me down. The next thing is a compressor. Now, this is very important. Now, what I usually do is I will have my lead vocal that I send to my lead vocals bus. And then on that lead vocals bus is where I do pretty much everything except for maybe auto-tune. However, that kind of approach does go out the window a little bit when you're talking about sharing the spotlight, as I call it, with these two lead vocals that have equal value and one pan left and one pan right. Because if you compress both of these, if you send them both to the bus channel and you compress the bus channel, the problem with doing that is these are individual takes. The left take and the right take are not the same, so the dynamics are different. So it's gonna make it a bit murky and sloppy in the compression of it if you're not first doing it on the individual tracks for this type of vocal sound. So what we have here is, this is what I call the balance compressor. In my three-step compression system, it's balance compressor, glue compressor, and punch compressor. Now for this sound, because it's a lighter compression sound, I just skipped the glue compressor altogether, and I just went with the balance compressor, and then we do have a punch compressor on the vocal bus, which we will get into in a minute. But what you basically want, it's very simple. Fairly high ratio, I usually go around five or six to one ratio, and then a fast attack, fast release. So attack maybe around one millisecond, and then release maybe between like 10 or 20. Pretty fast, pretty straightforward. The, the point is to just make sure that any loud parts get ducked, so you have a more evenly balanced sound. Took the breath from my As you can see, it's mouth. doing some uh, compressing Never here. Known how it broke me down, in circles somewhere else. So obviously you're just uh, you just adjust the threshold until it's at the right place. So that is the first thing you do there. And then obviously we're doing the exact same thing on both tracks. So I'm, I only need to go through this once. So once we have that first balance compressor done, then I opened up Fat Channel, which uh, actually I lied earlier. So I did use compression, the punch compressor as I call it, on both individual tracks before I went to the bus. So, on the fat channel here, we've got this compressor. It's just like an analog style vintage Took compressor. The from my open mouth. Never known how it broke me down. And here, we're doing about three to six dB of gain reduction. Now, I love these types of compressors. Uh, we're, we have a four to one ratio. Fairly fast attack, even though it is turned all the way slow. This is inverted, by the way, like this is fast and this is slow on like the most compressors that you might have inside your doll. Uh, and this is a fairly medium-ish fast release going on here. So when it comes to compressors, just use a compressor that sounds good in your DAW. It could just be your basic stock compressor. Just use it twice, right? Start with the balance compressor like we just did, and then you can just do pull in a duplicate compressor to add another three to six dB of gain reduction, except this time maybe make the release a little bit longer and the attack a little bit slower. Okay, so that's the work that we did on the individual tracks, right? We have gate, auto-tune, balance compressor, and punch compressor. And we did, I copied and pasted the exact same settings for both. So now let's hop over to the vocal bus right here. So I'm sending them both to this, and we're doing some extra bit of processing here with like EQ and things like that. So, let's start with the EQ. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, man, what, what are all these weird moves? Like, if it looks confusing to you, don't sweat because I'm going to walk you through real quickly why I made these moves. So, the first thing, let's look at low cut, high cut. So, I low cut, I use this, just filtered off anything below about 80 to 90 hertz. We don't need anything down there. It's not adding anything. And then, on the top end, I love to do it, especially again for this type of genre, This in this genre for this type of sound, to filter it off a little bit. 
never known how it broke me down. Generally, you don't need that super sparkly information above 10K. You want it to be a little warmer and softer and more mild. Um, so that's the first thing, low cut, high cut, and uh, we'll go from there. The next thing is you wanna check how the vocal feels in the low range and the low mid range, usually between 200 hertz five and 500 hertz. Now, I approached this a little bit differently than I usually do for my vocals. Usually what happens is I'll have, I'll make a cut over here, right? In the 250 to 500 hertz range, it'll look more like this. However, for this track, that warmth actually sounded good. And it's also because of the minimal instrumentation around it. It adds that warmth and that fullness to it where you don't want to cut away too much of that. And so I actually left that for now anyway. I think I do add a slight cut in that range here in a second. But I just went down here and I pulled down between 100 hertz and 200 hertz uh, to get rid of a little bit of this. The breath from my open mouth. I felt like it was a little bit too much of that and part of that may have been I was a bit closer to the microphone when I was recording than I generally am which often means you get a bit more of that boominess in the 100 to 200 hertz range. So that's why I made a little cut here. Nothing too crazy though. And then the biggest cut that I made is in the 2K range. Now this will depend on like your voice and your microphone. You might not have to do this. I almost always do this on my voice just because of the tonality of it and I tend to have a lot of buildup in the 2K range. So here is what it sounds like if it's boosted. Right, it's that frequency. It's that harshness. And it's crucially important for this genre that your vocal sounds warm, sounds almost hollow, and too much of those harsh frequencies in the 1K to 2K range is gonna have a negative effect. So that's why I cut that here. And then I'll also pull this in to add just overall in the 1K to 2K range, do a little 2 to 3 dB cut there as well. And then to add a little bit of sparkle so that it cuts through the mix, um, I added a boost at 5K. And that sounds like this. Let's come over here for this one. And I hear your Store it up on your right, so it's that range. Now, if I didn't add it, I felt like it didn't quite sit in the mix well enough. In search of someone else. So I added that in to help it cut through the mix slightly more. It's a balancing game between maintaining warmth and making sure that your vocal doesn't get lost in the mix, right? It's a delicate balance that you want to find. Now, what I added next to this bus channel right here for the vocals is a de -esser. And I just used the compressor inside of Studio One to achieve this using the sidechain knobs down here where it filters it, yada, yada, yada. There's a preset. If you use Studio One, there's a preset for that uh, that you can use a de -esser. But use whichever de you have in your DAW and just go for it. Now, this next plug in here is optional. If you don't have it, don't sweat. I just added this in here because I thought it sounded cool. It would still sound completely fine without it, but this is RC20 by Excellent Audio, one of my favorite plugins. I generally use this on drums, on keys, on guitars, but I thought sometimes it can sound really good on vocals as well. So here is what it sounds like on the vocals and then I'll turn it off. Here's without it. Now, it does add some volume as well. What we added here is a bit of distortion uh, with the tube pair. So we just added a bit of like tube saturation and I also went ahead and added this little bit of noise. This. Just because I thought it sounded good. It helps add that atmospheric air and life to the track uh, underneath everything. Uh, and those are the only two things that I have turned on. Most of these knobs here are turned off. So a little bit of RC20 can be a fun thing to add, especially again for this genre. Lastly, before we get into the reverb, we have one EQ move 
or no, two EQ moves on this vintage EQ right here. So this is in the 220 hertz range. I just made a 3 dB cut just because I thought it was building up a little bit too much, especially when I was referencing the original. Um, I felt like it needs to be tamed a little bit more, especially since we do have two, and especially because the vocals are on the sides. The more that things go to the side of the stereo field, the more you have to watch out for this wah wah murkiness and muddiness that might be there, and you wanna make sure that it's not too much of it. So that's why I made a cut uh, in the 220 hertz range right here. And then to add just ever so slightly uh, more sparkle on the top end, because we added RC20 that warmed it up a bit. So then to bring in some more of that high end back, I just did like a dB and a half boost on the high shelf right here. So it's just doing this right where it takes it like this and it adds one dB of boost to the top end. All right, so that's it. And then just one more thing is the reverb. So I'm sending the bus channel to this Valhalla reverb right here. And literally I went with the default Valhalla Vintage Verb preset, which is the Concert Hall 1970s. And I just turned down the decay time to about two seconds. So it doesn't decay quite as long. Because if it's here, I think it was like three and a half or four. It's a default. Shook the best when your love was home. Store it up on the I thought that sounded better there. And then I did do the low cut to come up to about 200 hertz. Often I'll go more than that, right? I'll go up to like three, four, five, even 600 hertz sometimes. But again, we are we want to maintain that sense of hollowness, that warmth. This is not your typical like EDM pop song where you just almost abandon the low end. You wanna make sure that you keep that low end in, otherwise it's gonna to sound too tinny for this genre. So that is the reverb that we are sending this vocal to. And uh, that's how you get that Novo Amor type of vocal sound. So to wrap this up, Let's listen to it. Before we do that though, I do wanna let you know one more time real quick about my visual EQ guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. I screwed that up. Anyway, be sure to download that. It's really gonna help you out to start fixing problems and not just making a bunch of moves without making your tracks better. So this is going to help your vocals out tremendously. Download it, it's 100% free. All right, here is the song from start to finish. Well, not from start to finish. I didn't remake the whole song, but just from like verse one through the end of the first chorus. Here we go. Took the breath from my open mouth. Never known how it broke me down. I went in cycles somewhere else. Shook the best when you love was home. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna jump in here because I forgot to mention these. So I did add an extra double left and a double right. And I also forgot to mention how I pan these. So the lead left and right are panned 70 left and 70 right. They're not 100 left, 100 right, because I didn't think that sounded quite as good. Uh, because what happens is when you go 100 left and 100 right, It still sounds good. I just think sometimes I like to bring it in slightly so it maintains a bit more cohesion. So they don't feel completely separated in the mix. So let's go back to our voice. And then what I did here when this chorus comes in, the main thing you hear added is this low octave, right? And I hear a... Now this is a classic example of when you're recording, you wanna just record what sounds good because when I started it, I just used my natural kind of speech-like voice, which was, and I hear your ship is coming in, but that sounded too thin. Notice how this sounds. And I hear your right? ship is coming in. 
because layered in the mix, when it's just the bottom there, that sounded better to me. If it was the lead vocal, obviously you wouldn't do that, but we're serving the song here, so that's what I thought sounded best. And then I'm sending this to the vocal bus right here, to the same bus that we are sending both of these other vocals to. The other two doubles we have here, I panned 100 left and 100 right, and I just turned the volume down. So it's the exact same type of thing, it's just two extra takes to add a bit more width and a bit more volume and fullness for uh, this and to just differentiate it from one section to the next so it just adds more interest and dynamics. And so there's the left and right. And I also did cut away a bunch of the low end on these because, like I mentioned earlier, anything that's super on the sides, you wanna be very careful to make sure they're not too muddy, not too much of that weight on the sides. Weightier stuff usually needs to be more down the middle. That's why a sub bass is always down the middle. It sounds better there. It doesn't, it starts to sound wonky when you get a lot of buildup of low frequencies on the side. So on both of these background doubles that I panned hard left and right, I made a big old cut in the low range like between 200 and 400 hertz, as you can see. All right, so that's all that is going on here. Let me just play this chorus one more time and then I'll wrap this up. So that is how you produce a Novo Amor type of a vocal sound. I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you found it helpful. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know what kind of content or which artist or type of sound or production quality that you would be interested in learning. And I just might make a video on it just like I did for this one. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, my friend. Bye.